and the Lord Jesus on the night before he was betrayed he took bread in his hands, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my blood, which will be given for you. In the same way he took the comfort with wine, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my blood, it will be shed for you. And whenever you do this, you remember me in my dying and rising till I come. As I said to you in the beginning of the Mass today is the greatest feast of the Church. Because the focus of the Church is the Eucharist. There are seven sacraments. And the seven sacraments are all connected to the Eucharist. Because unless we have the Paschal Mystery, the dying and rising of Jesus, none of the sacraments has no meaning. And that's why Jesus died and rose. So by his death, he will restore us to the eternal Father. And by his resurrection, he gave us the hope of our union with God after we pass on from this life. And this is why it is very important to understand why the church celebrates this great feast with great solemnity. Because on Holy Thursday, the church cannot celebrate this feast due to the fact that we are about to, right, to see Jesus going to Calvary. And so the church enters into a morning. And there is no time for celebration. And the church transfers this feast now so that we can publicly and really with great solemnity honor Jesus who remained with us in the sacrament of the earth. In the first reading today, you heard from the book of Genesis how Melchizedek, being the king of Salem and also priest, brought bread and wine and offered to God these bread and wine in thanksgiving over the victory that Abraham has done. And that was the foretaste of what Jesus is going to do when the same bread and wine is going to be in the hand of Jesus at the end of his ministry and offer it to God as a given for what he is about to accomplish and for the redemption of the world. But I like to focus today on that second reading. That second reading today reminds us of what the institution of the Eucharist is all about. Jesus knows that few hours before before he was given to be in the hands of his enemy and put him to the cross, he wants to give himself in the hands of his friends. How beautiful it is. That before he was given in the hands of enemies, he wants to be in the, in the hands of his friends. Well, he knows that his friends, although one of them was about to betray him, he was going to be in good hands. And that's why St. Paul said, that this institution is very important to understand that Jesus gave himself totally and completely for the salvation of souls. Now we are going to examine those words of institution because we have to be very serious about them. It's not because there is a priest at the altar and say those words and uh, Jesus ipsa facto come to the altar, which is true. By succession of the apostles, Jesus comes under those words. But what those words mean, I really try to make it a little bit clear to you. Every priest ordained according to the law of the Catholic Church, under the succession of the apostles, because we are ordained by a bishop who is the successor of an apostle, he participates in the priesthood of Jesus Christ. And that's why many times when a priest is ordained, we say he is another Christ. We call him another Jesus on earth. In other words, Arthur Christus. In other words, he is now represent what Jesus himself intends by his fiat to the Father to do. And he did on the wood of the cross. So when we speak about Jesus taking his bread and said to them, this is my body, he meant it. And when he said, this is my blood, 
He meant it. And any priest who celebrate and say those words of the consecration, he better think twice before he say those words. Because as Jesus was given the day after on the wood of the cross, and that's why Jesus anticipated at the last supper, his suffering and death, the priest too has to give himself and to become victim for the people he serves. When I say this is my body, which will be given to you, I am not giving you my body, I am not giving you my blood, but I am being given to you so that you will see and will come to understand who is Jesus. By I remind myself that I have to become the slave of my community. I have to be the victim of many people who do not understand my ways. For many people who disagree with my teaching. For many people who laugh at my at my stand at my stance of faith where I stand where I stand. And that's why he became Alter Christus. If you want to follow me, take up the cross. And there, at the very cross, we come to identify ourselves with Jesus Christ. And the priest really need to understand that he has to give himself totally and completely to the serving of his community. And that's why many times we find priests being tortured by people and sometimes we see even communities, they do not like the style of this individual and so and so forth. Because that priest become Alter Christus. He become victim. And that's what Jesus is. He is the priest because he offered himself. He is the victim because through him we were redeemed from our sins and he is the one sacrifice. Not only we sacrifice him, but we sacrifice our life too. Not we celebrate, but we also feast on him because he become a meal for us. My dear people, many people do not understand the great mystery of the Eucharist. This is what is missing in the life of our Catholic communities. That's why we have so much divisions and our people does not have no purpose of living. Everything is booze, drugs, pleasure, money. And those things has no peace. Those things will never bring nothing to our human longing. If the family, if our families understand that that Sunday liturgy is the focus of their being together, we will see our doors being pulled by people early in the morning to rush 